Hi, hello. Uh, welcome to the session about section translation uh, at the Arctic Knot 2021. Um, my name is Amir Aroni. Uh, I'm the strategist in the language team in the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, with me today are uh, Elias Sikin Garberger, uh, who is our design researcher, and uh, Paul Giner, who is the designer and the product manager, and uh, uh, Nick Gudas, uh, who is our software developer. And we are going to speak about the uh, section translation. Uh, about its relationship to content translation, uh, which is a, its continuation, and um, the design and the research that went into it. And uh, we hope that you find this interesting and uh, you find use for it in your projects. So what is section translation and uh, what is content translation? And why are we even doing this whole thing? And we're doing this because we are in the Wikimedia movement. And the vision of the Wikimedia movement is imagine a world in which every single human being can share in the sum of all knowledge. And knowledge is almost always encoded in language in one way or another. So language can be uh, the code for knowledge. And if you know the code, it's great. But if you don't know a language, then it can be a gatekeeper. It can be a blocker. So bridging the different languages uh, helps us uh, help you, help people, help all the uh, human beings to get access to knowledge, to read knowledge, and to contribute knowledge. So that's what we do. And uh, we're trying to develop tools that help uh, all the readers and editors do that. So uh, if we look at Wikipedias in different languages, we can see the gaps in the amount of knowledge there. Uh, English Wikipedia is the largest. It has uh, much more than... 6 million articles. German is the second biggest wide number of articles. It has 2 million articles. The Indonesian language, uh, which is one of the top 10 languages in the world, it has a little over half a million articles, even though it has more speakers than the German language. Uh, Bengali, which is also one of the top 10 languages of the world, uh, has less than 100,000 articles. Uh, some other languages that we looked at when we were doing the research, Nepali and Zulu and Lao, all of which are spoken by millions of people, they have even fewer articles in the Wikipedias in them. And all of them actually have active editing communities, but uh, because of all kinds of technical and social reasons, the growth is not as fast as it could be and should be. So content translation is what our team is trying to do to address that. We've been doing that since 2014. Uh, we first deployed this in uh, year 2015. Uh, since then, it has been growing. And uh, people have been using this to create a lot of articles. It's certainly not the only thing to help people to contribute knowledge in more languages, but it's one of the currently most notable tools for people to uh, help knowledge propagate across languages and different Wikipedias. What is content translation? Content translation helps create new Wikipedia articles by translating them from another language. That's a simple one sentence explanation. Uh, in case you're not familiar with what content translation is and how does it look like. So since 2015, and when we first deployed this, this is more or less how content translation looked like uh, on desktop computers. You see the first column here, uh, uh, it's translating from English to Spanish, and the first column on the left-hand side uh, is the original Wikipedia article in English, Plants in Space. Uh, and you see just like a Wikipedia article, just narrower because it's uh, one column, but you see the title, the image at the top, and some text that is beginning there. Then you see in the middle the column where you are going to write the translation. It's an empty column. Here you are going to write your own translation. You can use machine translation to help you, but basically machine translation is just, just a tool which may or may not help you work more quickly and translate the article, but you are just the editor. Um, the content translation tool helps you see both articles side by side, and it gives you some tools to translate uh, more efficiently, like image adaptation, template adaptation, link adaptation, uh, machine translation, and so on. And that's the basic idea of content translation. What have we achieved with content translation? So uh, since 2015, more than 900,000 articles were created in all the languages. Uh, if, if, if it was all just in one Wikipedia, in one language, it would be in the top 20 uh, of Wikipedias. But here we're talking about all the languages. Some of the top languages, uh, 
in, into which articles were translated are uh, Spanish and French and uh, Russian, um, the bigger ones. But we also want this to be used for the uh, smaller languages, for basically for all the languages. And um, we do know something about uh, the quality. It's very hard to measure quality well. One simple measurement of quality that we know is that of the articles created by translation using content translation, um, on average, about 3% of these articles are deleted, which is better than uh, articles that are created not using content translation, just by uh, creating the page from scratch. About 12% of these are deleted. So this is not a precise measurement of quality, but it's a simple one. Since uh, content translation is a tool for creating articles, measuring the deletion rate sounds like one simple um, quality uh, measurement. So that's what we know. These are more or less the successes. However, we also have some challenges. And uh, that's where I pass to uh, Pao to talk about uh, the limitations and uh, the challenges and how we are going to try to address them. Thanks, Amir. Um, yeah, so during these uh, several years where we have been uh, working on the tool, we have been also um, hearing and observing how uh, different users have been using content translation, and we identified some areas where the translation experience can be improved. Um, one is that the main focus for the, the tool was to create new articles, but it also makes sense to expand them and not only create the first version of, of an article by means of a translation. If we look at the coverage of a topic across different languages, even for articles that exist in those different languages, the content may be more elaborate in English than in Korean or in Hindi. For example, this is all you can learn about the T-Rex in, in Hindi if you, yeah, if you only speak that language. And it's basically two paragraphs of text. Uh, you have also uh, uh, an info box with, with some data and some references, some of them also in, in English, which won't be that useful in this scenario. But that's not a lot of content. So we think that uh, translation can also help to bring some of the contents that are available in, in other languages to make uh, the content more rich. Another aspect is obviously the, the focus of the tool on desktop, and in this case, supporting the mobile experience is not something that it's coming it's uh, already a, a reality and we identify that there are uh, even significant number of mobile only users which means that they are basically uh, left out of the uh, translation experience with our current tool uh, this is the reason where we started the project of section translation which is basically an expansion of content translation. So basically, when we complete the process, there will be only one translation tool. Uh, but we wanted to highlight that while content translation was very focused on creating articles and desktop, we want to expand that experience to cover the creation and expansion of articles on both desktop and mobile. And this new part is what we refer to section translation. And in particular, we started by focusing on how to expand articles on a mobile device and support that experience in a, a fluent and, and positive way. And more on, on that story is what uh, Eli will be providing details about. Thanks, Paul. So my name is Eli. And I want to just give a quick overview of the process we went through uh, in terms of the research and design behind section translation. So here's a rough view of what that process looked like. We started off with concept testing, uh, multiple rounds of prototype testing with, with editors. This provided an opportunity to iterate on initial designs and test some key assumptions that I'll mention here briefly. Uh, next, we moved to a proof of concept. Um, we also did extensive internal testing during that time. At that point, uh, when section translation became available on a test server, and thereby came accessible to editors from all wikis, we, we started gathering feedback already at that point. Um, and then in coordination with the community, section translation was released to the Bengali Wikipedia in early 2021. 
uh, we followed with announcements and invites sent to active mobile editors who could begin using and testing the tool. And that took us into usability testing, uh, which started immediately as the, the tool is available in the Bengali Wikipedia. So I'll just uh, mention a few additional details about these different points in that process. So with early concept testing, what we did was we went through this iterative process of testing the current designs, uh, evaluating after a number of sessions, identifying problems, opportunities, taking some time to modify designs, uh, and then taking those back for another round of testing. Wanted to give a few highlights from that early concept testing. So one of the things we wanted to do here was validate some core assumptions. So things like editors perceiving value in expanding articles via translation, uh, completing a section, uh, finding out that that provided an easier, faster feeling of satisfaction, and then also learning things around uh, ideas such as how editors are sensitive to content gaps, especially in smaller wikis, and motivated to close them. We uncovered a, a number of new areas for ex exploration. So we did uh, discover and fix a number of usability problems that we, we found in those multiple rounds of testing. Um, we also learned things like uh, working at the level of the section raises questions and opportunities for additional consideration of collaborative translation activities. And we also learned things around how translators vary in terms of preferences around the unit of translation, whether they might be translating sentence by sentence or paragraph by paragraph. Uh, just to call out a few quotes from uh, folks during this process, uh, one tester said, I don't have any laptop, I just use my phone. And another said, oh, I can translate a section only. That's amazing. Instead of doing the whole article together translating, if I can do one section, it's much easier. So after early concept testing, we went on to a proof of concept and also some early feedback. So while still in development, a basic workflow became available on a test server in late 2020. And in anticipation of 2021 deployments to real wikis, we started gathering feedback from a group of experienced content translation users. Um, so just to call out uh, a quote here as well, uh, one uh, of these folks said, what I liked most was the fact that changing and confirming translations is done at the power part or lower portion of the screen. Uh, Finally, once uh, section translation was ready to be deployed to a real wiki, uh, we coordinated with the Bengali community to conduct usability testing to evaluate the general usability of the, the current experience and workflow. Uh, we received overall positive reception, so section selection was frictionless for the most part. Uh, the process of editing machine translation outputs was intuitive in the way it was presented on a mobile device. Uh, and in fact, during that testing, the majority of participants actually published new sections successfully. During this process though, of course, we also identified a number of key aspects to improve. So for example, we, we learned very early on that the ability to search for specific articles was essential. Uh, we also learned that we needed an easier way of ordering new sections for mobile devices, something that wasn't currently easy at the time. Um, and then things like supporting support for additional machine translation services. And we've tracked some of these improvements, uh, some of which have already been made and others uh, of which are in pro progress now. Um, so I just wanted to call out one quote that really stands out from participants, but it's, it's a simple one. And, and they say, I don't have to open different tabs to translate. So that was really easy. And so one of the problems that section translation solves is really being able to work across wikis with translation uh, in a single screen on a mobile device. So again, that was sort of the process we went through uh, to get to where we are today. So I'll just say a few things about uh, what's next and what could be on the horizon. So one of the things that's currently underway is, is we're exploring new entry points. So this, this means ways in which editors might find, discover, and begin using such translation tools like section translation. <clears throat> 
So uh, we're looking at ideas that uh, are around things like from expanding existing ones, uh, for example, suggestions on articles to expand with a new section, um, to more experimental ideas. And we actually have research in progress uh, as we speak here on ideas such as this. So for example, one idea is that readers may get uh, machine translation sections that they could improve for missing sections as they're you know, exploring and reading and going through different articles. So trying to connect people with opportunities as they arise uh, in their other, their regular experience uh, on Wikipedia. There's also exploration around uh, the machine translation field. So one of the things we really want to learn more about is how uh, editors and translators edit these machine translation outputs. And so what happens from the moment that uh, they get a machine translation to the moment that maybe that translation is published uh, in a article or article section. And then finally, uh, another area is looking into new services for underserved languages uh, where there might be opportunities. And with that, uh, I'll pass it over to my colleague, Nick, who will be giving us a, a brief demo here. Thank you, Eli. So now it's time for our little demo. And uh, here we are in uh, our application dashboard. And uh, this is where some suggestions about uh, translations, uh, section translations uh, are available. And user can pick one or if they are not satisfied with them, they can just refresh the suggestions and new suggestions will show up. But uh, section translation also supports search for an art article functionality. And uh, here I can just type my preferred article. And this is Moon for this case. Uh, please note that this is a demo. So some things may be a little different than in production wiki, but let's go ahead and uh, before proceeding to translate uh, sentences to uh, create a new section. Uh, this is the confirm a translation screen where users can check some statistics about the visits or about the missing sections. And uh, I'll go on to select a section to translate. Uh, for our purposes, this is a, a list with all the sections missing in Spanish and here are also the present sections but I'll go with the legal status section and just by clicking it we are navigating to the next screen which is compare the contents uh, of the section in English and uh, here is the full article in Spanish and you can na just navigate through this uh, screen and see what they are about to translate so uh, I go ahead and press that button here, it's a quick tutorial. Uh, there are some basic informations about section translations is used and uh, what is its purpose. Well, just go ahead and skip it. Here is the most important part of our application. It is basically our um, screen where uh, users can uh, translate sentence by sentence uh, the whole section. And uh, of course, I'll start by translating the art, the section title. And this is this looks good to me, and I'll just press apply. Users here have the option to just apply the uh, proposed translation or go ahead and edit it. And uh, I'll go with apply for this one. And uh, here I, ca I can also see that there is this settings button, which offers the possibility to uh, just change the machine translation provider. And here is the Google proposed translation. Um, this is the visual editor where users can uh, modify the, tra the proposed translation. Uh, there is this, this panel at the top of the screen that so that we can always check what our the initial contents of the, this sentence. So, or this is a dummy translation, so no need to 
for real content here. Sorry about that. Um, so I, I consider that I have already translated this section for our purposes and uh, we can go ahead and click on the done button so that we can publish this section. And uh, this is the last step before publishing and uh, it's about confirming our publication because here we can also change the contents and this is very similar to the previous step. And once I decided that this is my final uh, translation, I can go ahead and click the publish button. Yeah, it was, it was successful. So I'm redirecting to the article page and we can see that uh, the new section is highlighted and also we can expand it and here are, is our contents. And uh, below there is this panel that help me understand that this, this is a new section and also I have the chance to close the loop and uh, start a new translation by clicking on translate another section button. And here is the redirection back to our home screen. This is our uh, dashboard again, and that would complete our uh, demo. So thank you, and uh, Pau, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Um, cool. So yeah, if you're interested about this project, as it has been mentioned, it's uh, an ongoing project. It's an, an early stage, uh, although it's already functional and you can give it a try. You can uh, search for section translation or in MediaWiki uh, SX as the abbreviation in the same way that CX was for content translation. And yeah, we did just a, a quick reminder that the language team is also uh, supporting other language related projects so you can learn more in general about the team also in in this in this link uh, or looking for wikimedia language engineering team so thank thank you for for your time and your interest in, in our projects